from Washington, this is VOA News. The White House readies a response to Syria. Pakistan's Musharraf stands trial for Bhutto murder. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. President Obama's decided there will be a response to the Syrian government's alleged use of chemical weapons. And the White House says he is now working with his national security team to determine just what it will be. Spokesman Jay Carney says there was no doubt that poison gas was used during an August 21st attack in suburban Damascus. The president believes that this is a grave transgression and uh, it merits a response. He will obviously take the time necessary to evaluate the options available to him in deciding upon what is the appropriate response by the United States in consultation with our allies and partners, in consultation with leaders in Congress. At a Tuesday briefing, spokesman Carney said there is very little doubt the Syrian government was responsible for the attack, which he called a flagrant violation of international laws. Syria's Foreign Minister Walid al Maalam is vowing to strike back at any Western military attack with what he calls surprise defenses. He says the West is using allegations of chemical weapons as an excuse to attack and insists Damascus is cooperating completely with a U.N. investigation team. Edward Duranian reports. Wallam said on Tuesday that Damascus is cooperating fully with the U.N. inspectors and he claims that Western nations are presuming Syria's guilt even before the investigation is complete. Mualim says the allegations that government forces used chemical weapons in Damascus last week are not true. He contends the chemical weapons accusations are a pretext, a false charge circulated by outside powers that want to invade Damascus and then go on to attack Iran. Edward Uranian for VOA News, Cairo. Prices fell on key stock markets in the United States, Europe, and Asia following reports the United States and other nations are considering military action against Syria. The convicted gunman in the Fort Hood, Texas shooting rampage rested his case in the trial's penalty phase without calling any witnesses or giving testimony. U.S. Army psychiatrist Major Nidal Hassan was found guilty last week of killing 13 people and wounding more than 30 others in a 2009 attack on the military base. On Wednesday, the jury of 13 military officers who convicted him will begin to decide whether Hassan receives life in prison or a military death sentence. Authorities in the western U.S. state of California say firefighters have contained 20 percent of a massive wildfire threatening Yosemite National Park. About 3,700 firefighters have been deployed to battle the blaze, which has consumed more than 72,000 hectares of land, including part of Yosemite. A war crimes court in The Hague will rule next month on the appeal of former Liberian President Charles Taylor, who is seeking to overturn his conviction and 50-year prison sentence. Last year, the tribunal ruled Taylor helped to plan, aid, and abet brutal crimes committed by rebels during Sierra Leone's civil war. Pakistan's former military leader Pervez Musharraf is on trial for murder in connection with the assassination of opposition leader and former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. The trial opened Tuesday in Rawalpindi, where Ms. Bhutto was killed in a gun and bomb attack after leaving a political rally in December 2007. Mr. Musharraf's pleaded not guilty to the charges, which include murder, conspiracy to murder, and facilitation of murder. The 70-year-old retired general did not attend Tuesday's proceedings and is exempt from appearing in court because of threats to his life. Chinese authorities have charged a British man and his American wife with illegally buying and selling private information on Chinese citizens. 
Peter Humphrey and Ying Zheng Yu were arrested in July, apparently in connection with China's investigation into alleged bribery by the British drug maker GlaxoSmithKline. The social networking giant Facebook says government agents in more than 70 countries demanded information on tens of thousands of Facebook users in the first half of this year. Facebook's report shows law enforcement agencies demanded data on about 38,000 users, with about half the orders coming from authorities in the United States. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. All this and more on our website at voanews.com.